one of the key trends that has really affected how we work is data harmonization. I think certainly within Europe and the type of projects we're working with, uh, working in particular with common data models, particularly OMOP, uh, the Observational Medical Outcomes Partnership model. This has been key, not just because of harmonizing data, but actually, certainly in some of the projects we've worked with, um, bringing people together in a harmonized, concerted way around the harmonization of data. And that's been critical. It's not just about data, it's about the people involved in generating it and using it. So for us, that's been a massive uh, impact, actually. I think certainly the most uh, underestimated, I mean it was on a previous presentation at the meeting, is, 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 is the patient. I think we're still not there yet, I think, in them generating and us taking and believing the data, the self-reporting that was, was, was in an earlier presentation at the conference. But certainly um, there's an old expression that if you ask a patient they'll give you all the clues. Um, and it's true, I mean, medicine is detective work. Mm. They put all the different clues together, mainly from the patient, to establish a diagnosis. Um, and I think in some respects we've kind of lost that art a bit in clinical practice. I'll get shot for saying that. Um, but also, I think importantly, we're not taking that into account enough, sufficiently in any, any way at all, um, regarding uh, research. More of what's happening in 2017. Um, certainly, I think the data harmonization, which I mentioned previously, will be uh, critical, I think. Um, I think linking of data will be really important. We're not there yet, and we'll see more progress, I think, into next year. I mean linking from different data sets, but also different data sources to give us more of a broader perspective and view um, in terms of research and, and, uh, and outcomes. I think really emergent technologies, everyone's keen to explore the next best thing, and the next exciting thing as well. And that's no different, I think, in 2018. Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not an analyst or a bioinformatician or so forth, but in terms of predictive analytics, I think the key, and it's been mentioned several times already in this meeting, I think the key is actually the, the, use, the use, the application of the actionable insights that are generated from predictive analytics. And then really only people who are going to adopt this more widely if it makes a difference to what they do, or changes how they practice and so forth. So I think that's going to be critical in seeing more use cases where we've seen a demonstrable impact on what we're doing in research, or the impact on the business, and so on. I hope we'll see more of that in 2018 again as well. There's a mixture of different regulators, of course. I mean, the European Medicines Agency, the FDA, and other equivalents worldwide, have a view on this clearly, an increasing view on big data, but also real-world data, and real-world evidence derived from it. And I think that, that uh, is growing now in momentum. Um, and what's important is that we all have collaborative and open discussions about this between all the key stakeholders. And that's starting to happen in the US, in Europe, internationally. I think that's uh, going to be key. I think in other regulators, uh, particularly around the general data protection regulation coming in to enforce next year, herein lies a challenge. I think there's a big gulf still between what will be the regulation, or is a regulation, and enforcing it and how everyone is responding uh, to it. And I think many of us still are struggling with the best way to, uh, to implement the regulation. It's a real challenge. Well, I think, like any organisation, I mentioned this previously as well, you, people are looking for demonstrable use cases. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of um, inertia for change. And particularly in pharma, where we've done things in a rather formulaic way over decades, trials, you know, we've always done it, it's worked. Um, why should I do anything differently? So again, you need to have demonstrable use cases. You need an evidence base to say, actually, look at the new insights that we generate and how we could be more efficient and so on. So you need to be quite persuasive in a very conservative environment and that will take some time and you need a number of champions in which to do that. But real-time reporting, I mean, we are seeing in all assets and facets, I suppose, a move to the old timing of life, I suppose. Things took days, weeks, months, years. And now we're seeing it increasing to what we heard at this conference. We can create analytical outputs in milliseconds using, for instance, financial systems and platforms in pharma. 
What I don't yet have a good insight to is, is how we are responding uh, as, as organisations. I mean, how does that change strategic thinking where you can base your decision today, not in six months' time? And so the speed of decision making, I think, is going to accelerate, but I'm not quite sure how prepared we are for that yet. It's something we need to evaluate. I think certainly in terms of utilisation of big data, real-world data, particularly if it's from sources outside of the organisation, outside of the pharma and the industry, it's got to be a quid pro quo. You have to have a balance in terms of uh, the shared benefit from those who have that data or generate it versus those who are interested in it and to get benefit on both sides. It can't be one-sided and it certainly can't be just because of money. Mm -hmm.